uh, my dear colleagues. Uh, uh, first of all, let me take the opportunity to thank uh, my local hosts, especially Professor Fujiwara, who unfortunately is not uh, on the scene, uh, for inviting me um, to give this uh, closing keynote talk uh, as the conference draws to a conclusion. Um, today, I would like to share uh, some recent findings with you uh, on a very important question. That is, how should we Sino-Tibetanists uh, identify subgroups in whatever uh, language uh, or languages we are studying? Uh, the a specific topic is the uh, immensely complicated Tibetic uh, family, which my colleague uh, Nicolas Tuonado uh, aptly uh, compared to, uh, to the, uh, to the romance, romance languages. Uh, in terms of internal diversity and number of distinct languages. Okay, uh, this is a case study uh, of an area, uh, a Kruchu in written Tibetan, or uh, Chu Chu in Nando Tibetan. That's uh, one of the uh, 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 counties within the Aba uh, prefecture in northern Sutrai. Okay, uh, I'll begin by introducing you to the languages spoken in this uh, county. Uh, this county is called, uh, in Chinese, Heishui, Blackwater. And the Tibetan word, uh, as you know, uh, means uh, cast iron, uh, water. <clears throat> the water doesn't look so black to me, <laughs> but they call it <laughs> that anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, in this county, three ind indigenous uh, Sino Tibetan language, language groups are represented. Uh, f the first one of them is uh, Rima, uh, uh, or uh, 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 the, auto, uh, the external name uh, is Chang, which is not in entirely uh, adequate, uh, and Jarong and Tibetic. Okay, uh, I'll show these uh, language groups on the map uh, for you. Uh, the, the red color or pink color area is the Rma speaking area, uh, uh, where uh, at least three or even four distinct uh, languages uh, are represented. The most prominent one is, of course, uh, Northwestern Rma, uh, including uh, Mao, the, the uh, prestigious Mao dialect. The, um, the yellow color area spoken in three villages uh, are the, uh, uh, the Jarong uh, languages. Uh, representing uh, two distinct dialects of uh, Eastern or Situ Jarong. And yet, as you can see here, to the north and west, uh, the green area, the green spots, are the, uh, uh, are the areas where the Tibetic languages, or to be conservative, I should say, lects, are uh, spoken. Okay, the Tibetic languages in, in Krochu. According to the Gazetteer of Heishui County, uh, they make the sweeping claim that the Tibetan speeches within the county are dialects of Amdo period. Okay, but this is uh, their Xianzhi or uh, Gazetteer. <clears throat> but this is grossly misleading. If you believe them, then you would uh, think that this is, okay, just another Amdo area, just like Hongyuan or Songpan. But that's not right. Okay, over the years, our continued documentation endeavors have uncovered as many as seven distinct, previously unknown Tibetic clusters. These are from, from west uh, toward the uh, north, northeast, are Saste, Taku, Roto, Eastern Chuna, Southern Matsa, Take, and Tsagi, uh, pronounced in the, lo in the local pronunciation. Okay, so obviously this is a very diverse, linguistically very diverse uh, area. So uh, two follow-up research questions naturally suggest themselves. First, what are the linguistic positions of these Tibetic varieties if, if I don't agree that they are all Ando? Uh, what are my opinions? Okay, how are they related to, to each other? Remember there are, that there are seven of them, right? How are they related to each other? And to Tibetic languages spoken beyond the Heishui County borders. 
Uh, before I proceed, uh, I would like to say a few words about subgrouping methodology. I, I hope, I, I wish I didn't have to do this, but apparently in the case of Tibetic languages, uh, we, we, we must remind uh, scholars that the, this is what the uh, orthodox uh, methodology requires us to do. Okay? Uh, historical linguists unanimously agree that language subgrouping is determined solely or only by shared innovations in phonology and morphology and to a lesser extent lexicon because these are evidence that members of a putative subgroup share a period of common history. But that statement uh, must come with two uh, qualifications or provisos. First, only aberrant, abnormal, typologically uncommon shared innovations are useful for subgrouping. Because frequently attested or natural, sound changes may well have arisen independently in languages or dialects belonging to different phylogenetic clades. Okay, the second qualification, which is uh, advising us uh, what would be uh, the way to go, to go uh, by default. Uh, this methodological guideline has been nicely captured or formulated by Robert Blust. He says, at the outset, every language can be regarded as a primary branch of the family to which it belongs. Okay, that's the default treatment. Put it at the highest level. <clears throat> when evidence of ESI or exclusively shared innovation is found for combining it with another language or languages, it is then assigned to a, sub -node, a subordinate node in the tree. Conversely, if you cannot find the evidence, if no evidence for ESI is found for assigning the target language to a subordinate node within a tree, that language must be assigned directly to the highest node, you know, like uh, hangers on a clothesline at the very, very top. Okay, uh, in view of the foregoing principles, uh, if one encounters an unstudied Tibetan variety somewhere in the world, one must resist the temptation to pigeonhole it rashly into a poorly defined dialect, Andor, Kams, or whatever, Western or whatever, on convenient but shaky criteria. Instead, one should leave it unclassified under Tibetic at the highest level until a closer affinity with a recognized subgroup can be demonstrated. Okay, uh, with that, uh, uh, methodological reminders in mind, uh, the goals of this study uh, are first to discuss a set of striking phonological, lexical, and morphosyntactic developments in, the, in one of the seven uh, uh, Tibetic lects, uh, Eastern Chuna, th th that's the local pronunciation, Ch Ch Chunak, or black water, okay? But they say Chuna, uh, or EC cluster, which supports uh, setting it up as a distinct Tibetic language. Uh, second goal, identify EC's probable next of kin in the Krochu County by examining how these innovative features are shared with neighboring lects. Okay, uh, uh, what, what uh, the target language of this study, Eastern Chuna, uh, where is it spoken? It is spoken only in two villages. One is called uh, Chungzang, uh, written Tibetan T-S-I-R-I, but pronounced Chungzang, or Zhi'er in Chinese. The other one is Zhengentang, or Zhengetang, in the local pronunciation. Two villages to the left of the Lumergi, or Maragai River, in Chuna, or Qinglang Township. The two, two village uh, dialects are broadly similar, but differ in numerous respects. Okay, a word about, their, uh, about the uh, sociolinguistic back backdrop of the area. The linguistic scene in Chunak Township is dominated by Northwestern Rma. That is the dominant uh, form of uh, Chang or Rma in the, in the Blackwater County, Heishui County. Six out of 11 villages of the township, even one hamlet in the Zengatang village is Rma speaking. So bilingualism is the norm here. Not surprisingly, Rma has exerted strong influence on Eastern Chuna. All right, uh, we're ready to, uh, to, to uh, examine the evidence. 
distinctive vocabulary. An immediately notable feature of EC is the presence of certain strange looking items in its core vocabulary. Some of these are readily recognized as rma, long words. For example, the word for, ta for takin, or a bovid animal, I'm, I, I'm sure you know what, what I'm referring to. Uh, this animal is called uh, in, in in this Tibetan language. Uh, but it's obviously a, a long word from Northwestern Chang Rma. Uh, their word is Zhu. It's very similar in pronunciation. But others appear to be innovative forms or substratal forms, uh, I cannot decide yet, of elusive origins. So for those of, uh, for those of you who are specialists of Tibetan, uh, these uh, words should look very strange. OK, uh, from top down. The word for cloud uh, in, in most uh, Tibetic languages would be uh, reflexes of the old Tibetan word spring, right? Oh, but in, but in uh, Zhonghua, it's shongpe, completely unrelated. The word for stomach, uh, old Tibetan poba, is songka. The word for snot is snops, uh, snops in old Tibetan, right? It's khtin. Uh, the word for bamboo, uh, Old Tibetan smyukma, is shan. Uh, the word for grass, uh, Old Tibetan sta, is sh. This is not a reflex, despite the uh, apparent similarity. Be able, uh, Old Tibetan tu, right, uh, is li. Uh, the word for heart, uh, Old, uh, Old Tibetan sin, right, is zhenbe. Zhenbe, uh, they're all different words. Uh, and uh, by the way, they are not uh, Chang words. Uh, because, uh, for example, the, the Chang word for cloud is zdom, from zdom, pronounced zdom. The word for stomach in, in Chang is stha, right? Snot is stay, bamboo is spa, and so on. Biebo is ti. So these are, these are not long words from from the locally dominant language Chang. OK, uh, next we move to uh, grammatical innovations. Certain unusual morphosyntactic features also contribute to the overall strangeness or aberrancy of the language. Some examples are uh, given uh, below from uh, Zhong Zhang. OK, F first, uh, these, uh, this language, uh, strangely, uh, has no morphological, does not mark morphological ergative or genitive case. That's really odd from a Tibetic point of view, right? The word for I is nga, and my book is also nga, nga yihu. No inflection. Uh, the, uh, the word for he or she, third person singular, is te, right? But if you say she ate bread, you just say te. No ergative uh, case inflection, unlike Amdor or any other uh, uh, Tibet, uh, Tibetic language. Uh, right? So this is really striking. Uh, second, identity uh, or syncretism of progressive and clause sequence marking. So, uh, so the uh, cl uh, clause uh, sequence marker is ni. That sounds, should sound very familiar, right? Many uh, Tibetic languages have a similar form, ne or ni. Uh, but this uh, form, ni, is also used in the progressive, uh, progressive verb form. So uh, uh, drinking booze is chang tong ni liu. Under Tibetan would say tong tong yok, right? But they use the same form as the uh, clause linker. OK, third point. Omissibility of copular verb in equational sentences. Uh, so uh, to say I'm Chinese, they would say na jiar er, right? Er uh, is of course from uh, the old Tibetan red, right? Uh, but uh, but they can omit it and just say na jia. Um, that is odd. Uh, it's not. It's found only in this dialect, not in the other um, uh, Tibetic languages in the Heisui County itself. <coughs> So next, we come to uh, phonological innovations. 
As is well known, once subgrouping efforts can only be as, su as successful as the phonological reconstruction upon which it is based. Uh, luckily, the sound system of old Tibetan doesn't have to be reconstructed, really, right? Because the answers, uh, because it is quite accurately uh, codified by the traditional Tibetan script. Uh, although, of course, uh, sometimes you, you need to, uh, to argue about uh, what the actual uh, sounds represented by, especially consonant clusters, uh, the actual values must have been, right? Uh, for example, uh, they have this interesting uh, cluster, DB. The, uh, the honorific word for head is DBU, right? Is that pronounced the boo? Um, we don't have any evidence for that. Okay, so, uh, so they, they, the, the, the most conservative form of, of that is rbu, r r b, right? Uh, in, in in some cases, the word for nine, the gu, um, uh, it, it, we are lucky to have uh, uh, East Polish uh, evidence, dogo, dogo for nine. So that means the Tibetan d uh, was realistic, right? Was was one time either a part of the sesquisyllabic word or whatever. Uh, but we don't, I mean, uh, there are, uh, there's room for, uh, uh, for interpretation. But uh, in, in the main, the system of old Tibetan doesn't have to be reconstructed, really. <clears throat> Phonological innovations of Tibetic languages uh, can therefore be quite reliably established by comparing the modern Tibetic sound systems with that of old Tibetan. However, phonological similarities of the following types must be discounted or discredited. <coughs> uh, first, inherited features or retained features, uh, like obstruent voicing, cluster, onsets, syllable codas, <coughs> or broad typological uh, traits, like tonality, phonation types, syllable structure. So a two Tibetic languages uh, are not more similar to each other because they both have tones. <clears throat> okay, uh, third, garden variety or completely ordinary de developments. Uh, voicing induced tonogenesis, cluster simplification, loss of codas. <clears throat> okay, only cross linguistically uh, unusual sound changes are of value, such as Old Tibetan uh, becoming taku, right? That, that's a very st striking sound change. The, their word for sour uh, is from uh, uh, Old Tibetan skul. <clears throat> Non-Tibetic exa examples uh, discussed in, in the liter literature include Proto-Indo-European duo becoming uh, Armenian yerk, or Proto-Manus, uh, that's one of the uh, Oceanic uh, uh, subgroups, uh, ndr, uh, becoming drehit, this dialect, k. Right? These are what we must uh, look for. If these uh, uh, unusual sound changes are shared between distinct dialects, uh, these quirky innovations provide important uh, probative evidence for subgrouping. So uh, we will uh, examine some of the uh, uh, unusual uh, sound changes in Eastern Chuna that I have discovered. Uh, first, first uh, one of them is Spiritization of skra and skya, these two clusters. Um, these two clusters turned respectively into palatal alveolar and retroflexed spirants. Uh, for, ex for example, to be afraid is sha from skrak. Uh, be swollen is shan uh, from skram. Uh, sour is sh uh, from, uh, from uh, written Tibetan skur. Uh, grow uh, is xi from uh, Tibetan xie. Okay, um, the second uh, uh, unusual sound change is also about spirantization. Uh, uh, spirantization of a, a, a cluster composed of a liquid, R or L, plus an affricate, uh, jie or jie. Okay, these become, be, became uh, palatal alveolar spirants. Uh, for example, the word for tongue uh, is xie from Old Tibetan xie. Uh, iron is xiaru. Uh, uh, it, it comes from uh, uh, Old Tibetan xiax plus some unknown uh, morphine. Uh, the word for flea is zhu uh, from written Tibetan lji, right? 
Uh, the word for change is zhe, from Old Tibetan rigye. Okay, third, merger of the, uh, of the uh, lateral-based uh, uh, clusters, uh, written LH, probably pronounced uh, hle, right? Uh, BL, probably pronounced ble, and B, uh, RL or BRL, pr probably pronounced rle in the past. Unlike most Tibetic varieties, these sounds merged, all merged into l, pre-aspirated l, voiced pre-aspirated l, l. So the word for uh, to fall from height is long, from l-h-u-n-g. Uh, <coughs> a solution or idea is l, from uh, written Tibetan blu. Uh, steam is long uh, from written Tibetan Rlampa. Okay, next uh, we have the apocope of R or loss of R without compensation. Um, the uh, Eastern Chuna reflexes of the Old Tibetan vowel plus R rhymes are identical with the corresponding vowel only rhymes, suggesting earlier loss of R without phonological compensation. So uh, the word for East and the word for meat are pronounced the same, xia, but they are different, right? And in in, uh, in Old Tibetan, xia and xia. <clears throat> oh, okay, uh, the the fifth unusual sound change uh, is a merger. Again, a merger, a merger, but very strange one. Uh, Old Tibetan a uh, and e eh merged into a, a different sound, a. Uh. <clears throat> So, for example, the word for fish is nya. That sounds familiar, right? But what about the word for f the word for fire? The word for fire, written in Tibetan, me, right? In some languages, uh, will have nye uh, or mi or nye, right? Uh, but in this uh, dialect, it's nya, exactly the same as the word for fish. Uh, a related sound change would turn. A R uh, uh, rhyme and E R rhyme uh, into a. Uh. Uh, the word for end is t from written Tibetan tsar. Uh, the word for star is gm from starma. And the word for spleen uh, is tsp from written Tibetan ntsirpa. Right? <coughs> Okay, the sixth uh, unusual sound change, uh, again, is about uh, developing of, of, a, of a new vowel that is not uh, found in Old, old Tibetan. That is, uh, the rhymes ad, ed, and od became a near high front vowel e, whereas id and ud, id and ud, became a high front vowel e, maintaining the original high distinction. Uh, for, for example, the word for chu is di, from uh, written Tibetan dat. The word for demon is di. So uh, chu is di, and demon is di, right? The, the, the vowels are different. <clears throat> okay, uh, the seventh uh, unusual sound change uh, is the development of contrasting length in nasalized rhymes. Old Tibetan nasal coda rhymes became short nasalized vowels, while coalescence of open root syllables and nasal onset suffixes yielded long nasalized vowels, leading to a phonemic distinction between short on, uh, pr pronounced in a falling tone, nga, an, and on, versus long an and on, pr pronounced uh, on, a level, uh, on a level tone, non phonemic level tone. These de developments constitute a unique origin of contrastive length in nasalized vowels, itself rarely attested in Tibetic, right? Uh, I'll consult my uh, Tibetic colleagues. Uh, d d contrastive length in the modern dialects are very uh, unusual. Uh, for, for example, the word for, for beer uh, is chong, from chong, right? <clears throat> the word for spittle, on the other hand, uh, is chong, chong, from a uh, written Tibetan Chilma. Okay, uh, after uh, having seen uh, some of the uh, uh, special phonological developments of this dialect, 
let's try to see if we can use uh, that kind of data to, to compare with uh, the, uh, the, the sound systems uh, it, of the dialects in the same county to see if we can find some uh, next of kin. <clears throat> Uh, our investigation has indeed turned up two candidates spoken in its close pro proximity. These two dialects are Wodo and Southern Matsa. As you can see on the map, this is where Eastern Chunak, the target uh, language, is. And Wodo is right here, very close. You can, you can walk from one, one village to, to the other. And across the river, uh, you have uh, Southern Matza. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's examine um, the, uh, the sharing of phonological innovations uh, uh, at, uh, across the seven uh, target uh, dialects displayed on top. Okay, um, of, the, of the nine characteristic sound changes found in the first First uh, column, Eastern Chuna, uh, only seven are shared across the dialects. And two marked in, in red uh, are found only in this uh, particular dialect. OK, uh, as we can see here, the spirantization rules uh, we just uh, discussed are shared across the three dialects. Uh, they, they may differ in, in, in detail. But uh, for example, in the southern Mitsa uh, dialect, uh, you see a simplification here, right? The original distinction uh, between uh, articulation places became merged. And the R loss without compensation is also shared across the dialect. But it's also found in, a, in, a, in a, another neighboring dialect. <clears throat> OK, uh, and, and the merger of the three lateral onsets uh, is shared between eastern Chunak and Wodo, but not in southern Matsa. Conversely, uh, uh, the merger of A, A becoming A is shared between eastern Chunak and southern Matsa, but not with Wodo. OK, uh, what about vocabulary? That, uh, the strange vocabulary that we have just seen. The peculiar Eastern Chunak lexical items shown earlier are also partially attested, not completely, unfortunately. <clears throat> okay, uh, uh, in this table, these are the, uh, the forms we have seen, right? The strange uh, looking uh, vocabulary we have seen. Uh, out, of the, out of the nine items, only two are shared. The word for heart and bamboo are shared across the dialects, the three dialects. The, word, the words for stomach and be able uh, are shared between Eastern Chunak and Southern Matza, but not in Wodo. <coughs> Whereas the word for extinguished uh, is shared between Eastern Chunak and Wodo, but not in Southern Matza. What about uh, the peculiar morphosyntactic features that we have just seen? Uh, these, are, these appear to be unique innovations confined to Eastern Chuna. They're not found in the, in the, even in the uh, uh, more closely related neighboring dialects. Look, let's uh, look at the, the table. So the non-use or unmarking of our ergative uh, uh, and genitive case is found only in Eastern Chuna, but uh, in both Wodo and Southern Mata, uh, explicit uh, case forms are used, just like uh, other uh, ordinary uh, Tibetic languages. Uh, the syncretism of the progressive marker and the sequentializer is marked with the same form, Ni, in Eastern Chuna, but both Wodo and Southern Mata use different case forms, or, or zero in the case of Southern Mata progressive marker. So a different situation in, in, the, other, in the other dialects. 
And the non-use of copier or optional use of copier uh, is possible only in Eastern Chuna and not in the other dialects. Okay, uh, to sum up, this study drawing on results from extended field invest investigations spanning almost seven years now, makes a number of significant contributions to Tibetic dialectology. First, we have discovered rich, previously unknown Tibetic varieties in Prochu County of Northern Sichuan. Second, we have tried to justify the identification of Eastern Chulna as a distinct Tibetic variety among six others on the basis of its uncommon phonological, lexical, and morphosyntactic developments. And next, we have presented phonological and lexical evidence for linking Eastern Chuna with two adjacent. But uh, by now, uh, uh, I'm sure you are convinced, but they are pro probably related, but still quite different. The two adjacent Tibetic varieties, Rodo and Southern Matza, uh, under a single tentative subgroup, because we're still gathering more evidence, which may be labeled uh, tentatively Southern Chunak Meza. So to summarize, we started with seven distinct groups marked by different colors. Now it is possible to merge the three into a single subgroup, uh, which we call uh, Southern Chunak Meza, because of their location in the, uh, in the areas. And from north, uh, uh, from, from northeast to southwest, we have Tagi, Dake, Daku, and Saste. These are, these are all different from each other and from Eastern Chuna Matza. So, in closing this uh, presentation, we wish to remind our Sino Tibetan colleagues that much untapped linguistic diversity still lingers precariously in the Tibetan areas of China and, and, I guess, elsewhere. Hopefully, this work and its uh, fuller presentation, uh, my forthcoming book, will prompt further county by county. We must do it this way, right? Uh, you, you, uh, uh, in my case, I propose to do the Tibetan dialect, uh, dialects of Heishui County. I suppose uh, there are other interesting counties in China and elsewhere uh, where you can just survey the whole county and and probe that the diversities. Uh, <clears throat> in Chinese, we'll say uh, that is point by point study. Uh, you change that uh, work attitude. You survey the whole area, okay? And survey the, the, just, not just the Tibetic languages, but uh, languages spoken in the area. <clears throat> county by county survey projects to systematically explore these areas. Um, the last statement is marked in in a different color because this is very important. Uh, I speak from personal experience. Before the generation of fully competent speakers fade into history. It happens not just in China, all, all over the place, as my dear colleagues would, would know. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your attention. This is Heishui County. Okay, thank you. <laughs>